I can see it in your eyes. I can see you a little bit upset, a little deterred. Oh, yes, but guess what? I'm here. It's here. You're here. I'm a rave. It's on. All year. Every year. Is he a great passer? No, he is not. Tebow 2.0 is coming, and it's already starting today. Nobody makes a living in the National Football League running the football as a quarterback at 213. Right. Napoleon appearing on ESPN Radio said that Lamar Jackson is an exceptional athlete, check, exceptional ability to make you miss, exceptional acceleration, exceptional instinct with the ball in his hand, and should change to becoming a wide receiver. Why? Why would you have to change to becoming a wide receiver? Because according to Bill Polian, he's too short. And if Lamar Jackson is also drafted in the first round, why would you tell him, don't get drafted in the first round? You don't want all that money. You should switch to wide receiver and get drafted in the fifth round as a project. That'd be way better for your career. What kind of stupid analysis is that? We look at the game today of the National Football League. It's not just about your ability to throw the football. It's about your ability to run the football. When I look at a guy like Lamar Jackson, uh, I'm looking at a guy that's rushed for over 1,500 yards in 2016, rushed for 1,601 yards in 2017, not to mention passing for over 3,000 yards a couple of seasons. Uh, you know, we know what a dual threat he is. Is he a great passer? No, he is not. You know, the upper 50 percentile is where his completion percentage ranks. It's not where Tim Tebow's was, which was at 46 percent or whatever the case may be, even though that was the pros, not college. But nevertheless, I look at Lamar Jackson and you know who I think about? I think about Cam Newton, not in terms of right comparisons, because Cam Newton's about three inches taller and he's about 40 pounds heavier. So we understand that. But in seven seasons in the National Football League, Cam Newton has completed 60% or better of his passes twice. Well, if Bill Polian wants to say that he could play wide receiver, that he's creative once the football is in his hands, that he's a game changer and a playmaker with his feet, why can't he do that from the quarterback position, particularly when he's shown the ability to at least make some of those throws? That's my position, well, and that's why yeah, I disagree I think with Bill Polian. But Bill Polian, I don't think, is reflexively going there. He's talking about he, – he brought up not only the lack of accuracy down the field, but also his slight frame. Look, he's six foot three. That ain't short. That's plenty tall enough to be a great quarterback. But he is slightly built. And so you understand there is an injury risk on top of everything else. The odds that he could be Cam Newton I don't think are great. The question is – if you have, let's say he is an injury risk and he's not quite Cam Newton, but he is a quarterback who in a good year can really bring a lot of value to your team. And because of his slight build, it's not a very long career. Would you rather have that as his upside or would you rather have uh, a, an exceptional receiver as his upside? I've, so I've spent the last three days watching these quarterbacks, the top, the, the big five, right? And I've really studied them. So I feel like I got them down uh, and you know, no, no offense to Sam Darnold. He's a really good player, and he's got a lot of playmaking ability, but there's no way he deserves to be the first pick of the draft or the fourth pick of the draft for my, for my money. Who does? I, I, um, I think the best quarterback in the draft is Lamar Jackson from Louisville. I mean, I, I really, yeah, I know you're looking at me. I didn't think I was going to be saying that two, three days ago when I started in on this. I didn't. I started watching. I went Josh Allen one, Baker Mayfield two. Then I watched Sam Darnold. I watched Josh Rosen. And then I watched Lamar Jackson and I came away and I write notes. I got my notebook. I could show you everything I write. And I came away and I said, Lamar Jackson's the best quarterback in this draft for me. They're, they're, he's the only one that has no questions. The only question you have about him is, you know, can he take the beating and the way he plays in the NFL? But decision making, throwing accuracy, accuracy to a degree. But I would I would argue there a little bit. I mean, he he doesn't get a ton of easy throws. He throws the ball down the field aggressively. But why is it we question his accuracy, but not Josh Allen, whose completion percentage was lower than Lamar Jackson? Right. right. I don't understand that either. I think there's a lot of things that are being un unfairly said about Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson's out of all the guys. They all have one glaring question to me. And. Lamar Jackson's the only one that does not have a question. I mean, he's the only guy that I look at and go, it's clean slate. The decision making is pretty good. Okay, yeah, accuracy if you're going to be picky, but he throws a lot of aggressive down the field throws, so you're going to miss the throws. I think this. I think Ozzy drafted a kid in the first round, trying to hit a home run for the franchise on his way out the door. This guy's a special talent. I can't wait to see him play because he, he could be special. We're not talking about Akili Smith and Donovan McNabb and all these guys. This guy has a transcendent skill set that nobody else has ever seen before. He brought this to the table. 
at some point you have to say to yourself as a coach, and that's what I've done for a living, when is it my job to get these guys better? I don't need to have the same sandwich every time. I got this guy that has this unique skill set. I can integrate him and create things around his skill set and come up with something that's quite dynamic. Would Mike Vick have been the top pick of this year's draft if he come out? This is the closest kid that we've seen to Mike Vick since then. Hmm. Lamar Jackson had a high completion percentage, threw for more yards, rushed for more yards than he did in his Heisman Trophy winning season. This past year. This past season. Mm -hmm. That's what he thought. He's, oh, he's a little on the short side. He's 6'3". I don't get okay, that. Okay, let's just say, okay, let's just say, you know, colleges, they feel a little bit, Skip. Let's just say he's 6'2". <laughs> Mm -hmm. Deshaun Watson was 6'2". Deshaun Watson was 6'2", 221 at the combine. I believe he will fall somewhere in the that. He'll probably is, be. Is he a little slender? He can't. Yes, yeah. yes. But he, he, he doesn't he look like Deshaun Watson the way he's built? He does. Because Deshaun is not built like Big Ben. He's not. They, they make it seem like Deshaun is this. He's not built like Cam Newton. Nope. My thing is, and if, if I'm Lamar Jackson, if my dream was to play quarterback in the NFL, yep. I'm going to give it a shot. If if Lamar Jackson says, okay, I'm not cutting it out as a quarterback, if he wants to try another position, do it. That's his choice. Mm -hmm. But I'm not listening to Bill Poley right now. I'm going to go to the combine, and I'm going to throw the football. Yep. I'm sure he's been working. Maybe he's working with Whitfield or Tom House or whomever. I'm sure he's working on his mechanic. My only concern about uh, Lamar, Lamar Jackson is – not deadly accurate. Mechanics are not what you'd call pretty mechanics. But I right. will tell you this. They are effective mechanics. Yes. Because when the ball leaves his hand, I like the look. Of, I'm just watching television. There's no wobble. I like the look of it. Yes. And it gets there quickly, and he can go hot, cold. But when he gets going, when he gets on a roll, he can wing it. Yeah. And obviously, we all know he can run it, like deadly run it. 1,600 like, yards rushing. Oh. Like, this, this is beyond RG3 yeah. as a runner. So if you can find the right mix of accuracy and the threat of running, as RG3 found for a year before he got hurt, if you can figure out how to stay healthy as a slenderly built quarterback in the NFL, I give you a chance to be really good at the quarterback position. I have predicted, and I'll say it again, Tebow 2.0 is coming, and it's already starting today. It's Lamar Jackson. And they've got a lot of similarities. News about the quarterbacks. This quarterback out of Louisville, Lamar Jackson, is here in Indianapolis. And he will throw tomorrow when the quarterbacks work out. But we now know a number of teams have also requested that Jackson work out with the wide receivers as well. They want to see both workouts. Jackson is yet to say, at least publicly, whether he's amenable to that. Not a real big surprise, Todd, that there would be requests. But, you know, some say get, give, the, give the quarterback spot a try and then, and then see where you land rather than, than jump in that ship now. Yeah, I don't, I don't think he needs to do it. I really don't. And I, I think you want to be polite and you want to be agreeable to a certain degree, but you also want to tell them, listen, I'm, I'm here to be a quarterback. I've, I'm training to be a quarterback. I expect to be a quarterback in the NFL. If someone wants to change him down the line, then that's, that's their prerogative. But I don't think he owes it to anyone to go run routes. That's just my personal opinion. I don't know if you guys disagree with that, but to me, his singular focus should be on his mechanics and playing the quarterback position because from what I've seen, there is potential there. There's a lot of room to grow, and he's, a team is going. If they draft him, is going to have to develop their offense around him, a lot like uh, Bill O'Brien did with the Houston Texans with Deshaun Watson. But to me, there's enough there that you can work with, use him in a package early in his career, and then try to develop him at the quarterback position. There's no question there is work to do with Lamar from a mechanic standpoint, with his lower body, with his release. So you can improve his accuracy to the point where he can throw the ball at, at all the different quadrants of the field with better accuracy. Namely, for me, outside the numbers deep, 15, 18 yards, which is where he really struggled at Louisville. On the plus side, though, the interesting thing about Lamar Jackson was this, and I agree with you. I think he should concentrate on quarterback while he's here. The, the, on the plus side, it's this. When you watch his regular season tape, when they were in pro-style concepts, two tight ends, two wides, uh, three wides, one tight end, one back, one tight end, two wide receivers, two backs. And the pass protection was good. It was three, five, seven-step drop. It was pro-style concepts that you see on Sunday every week. He looked good. 
He looked comfortable. He looked like he was throwing the ball in rhythm. He was throwing the ball on time. The same kind of things that help quarterbacks in the pro game. A running game centric type of attack that emphasizes play action. Lamar looked like a guy who could actually compete. Now when you started spreading them out and put them in spread five wides and protection started breaking down and the route concepts just became haywire. He looked like someone who was haywire. Right. So I would like to see him actually compete with the other quarterbacks here, have that be his focus, and if the NFL teams deem that he can't play quarterback at some point in the future, switch. You know he's an electric player with the ball in his hands. I'd just like to see him get a shot. In that way, I, I am, I'm in agreement with you. I've seen enough on the tape that tells me that he could do it. He's a superior elite athlete. Whether he will ever be a good enough passer um, to be a winning NFL quarterback, as everyone here says, there's a lot of, lot of work to do there, okay? Nobody makes a living in the National Football League running the football as a quarterback at 213. Right. And nobody makes a living in the National Football League at 213 with the ball in his hands every play. It's too light to take the beating. Yeah, thanks, guys. I'll tell you what, I'm excited because I've watched an awful lot of film of this guy. I think he's the most spectacular athlete in this draft. I believe he's a quarterback only, and I'm not even going to talk about anything else. Lamar, you come out here today. What did you want to prove? What did you want to show these guys? Well, you know, I came out here to show what to prove to the guys. You know, I can throw any pass from under center. Um, instead of going and gun, you know, that was, a, that was a lot of things some guys were saying. You know, you got to see how fast you can get back in the pocket and have velocity on the ball. So, yeah, every running quarterback wants to prove he can pass. Absolutely. And, and, and passing quarterbacks want to prove they can run a little bit. You know, it's, 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 um, you know, it's part of the game. You know, people always try to dumb you down for certain things. You know, either when they see you electric running the ball, they want to say, oh, he's, he's not efficient, you know, passing the ball. Or if they see you're a great passer, oh, he's really slow in running. So it's all the football talk, man. When the receiver thing came out, I was like, oh, no. I just, you know, I feel I shouldn't run a 40, you know. I, if they see my speed, they probably try to move me to another position. So I just did, well, you know, throwing the ball, let them know, you know, I can be a quarterback. Here with Lamar Jackson, who has just been named the most valuable player in the NFL. Lamar, you go from being asked to change positions to winning the MVP as a quarterback. Is that just the power of believing in yourself? Oh, that's the power of the Lord, but also believing in yourself. You know, you, you got to have confidence within yourself. Some people might say it's cocky, but you, you know what you're capable of, um, and the sky's the limit.